Hey everyone, it's Tyler Michelle Stroik from Universal Rackets and this is going to be an amazing video. We're going to teach you how to hit twice as big of a ball with doing half the amount of work. Once again, if you stay tuned for this whole video, we're going to be going over tips and tricks to get you two times a better ball when you play pickleball for your serve, for your forehand, for your backhand, for your drops, for your dinks, for your volleys without doing any work. It's going to feel effortless by the end of this video. You're going to go out and play pickleball and you're going to use the tips that we're going to teach you now and you're gonna be like, wow, I feel like I'm not even doing anything and I'm playing so well. A lot of times when players want to hit a really good shot, a really big, a really hard shot, what do they do, Michelle? They use all of their arm and they get tight and they just wanna like kill the other person or the ball. <laughs> yeah, and then you end up missing, you end up uh, trying to get the ball in, you end up slowing down, you end up self-destructing, and also you could end up injuring yourself if you're mm -hmm. just using all of your arm and your shoulder. So this is not only going to help you with all of your shots and gain your confidence, but this might as well save you from an actual injury. And like Michelle said, when someone wants to hit hard, what do you think? Hit hard, super tight. If you ever go and you check out all the pros, we went to uh, Major League Pickleball in Daytona and in Atlanta. It was absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. You see all these high level players, especially during those dream breakers, those singles events, which mm -hmm. are so exciting. They look like they're not doing much. They look like they're not even trying, but they're hitting such a big ball. Mm -hmm. It almost looks effortless, you could say. Yes. And the reason why is because they are using these tips that we are about to go over. They're utilizing proper body mechanics. When all these pros hit big and hit amazing shots, they're not gripping the paddle super hard. They're just doing certain different things. So should we explain those different things? Yes. Let's go. The shot that we are going to start with is the forehand drive, okay? The forehand drive. The number one shot that players typically take after their serve, the third shot, the third shot drive. So with the third shot, a lot of players, what they do is that they end up hitting the ball super hard and they end up missing long. They'll realize that they can't hit a good shot by trying super hard by gripping the paddle tight. So then what are they going to do? They're going to slow it down and just try to get the ball in. And that's their ceiling. They can never get higher in pickleball because again when they hit super hard they grip the paddle super hard it always goes long so they have to slow it down they don't have confidence the first thing that you have to do to hit 50 percent better without doing half the amount of work is all you're going to do is grip that paddle looser when you're playing pickleball you need to grip that paddle loose on a scale of 10 10 being the tightest one being the loosest you want to be a one or a two so the first thing that you have to do to hit two times better in pickleball on your forehand is grip the paddle loose now if you go and do this while you're drilling and you grip the paddle loose it's going to feel so weird you're going to feel like you have no control in pickleball it's going to feel odd to you you're not going to like it at first and that's why you should do it in a drilling setting but what's going to happen though is you're going to keep on doing it over and over and over again and the balls are eventually going to drop in and you're gonna go, wow, I can hit such a bigger ball, but I don't even feel like I'm doing something. So again, step number one to hit the ball two times bigger without doing half the amount of work is by letting the paddle go, holding the paddle loose. Now, the second thing, now where does our power come? If we're gonna hit a big ball on our forehand side, now Tyler, I'm holding the paddle loose, so what should I do? After you hold the paddle loose, you're going to start thinking about your legs. All of the power, all of the spin, all the control in pickleball comes from your rotation and your legs. Power and acceleration equals rotation and legs. The more you can rotate your body, the more you can get into your legs, the better it's going to be. So what we're gonna do with Michelle right now, we're going to walk her through two drills that you can incorporate on court to get these two types of things by holding the paddle loose and by getting into your legs and rotating. So the first thing we're, that we're gonna have Michelle do, and this is for every single person that grips the paddle super tight with a death grip, is we're going to have Michelle hold her paddle with her index finger, her middle finger, and her thumb. So go and show the camera once again what you're holding the paddle with. Now, it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna be pretty but this is going to teach her how to really let that paddle work for her and not work for the paddle. So you're just going to do a couple forehands and you're just going to hold 
the paddle loose. Wow, <laughs> they, they actually might look good. Good, one more. Oh my gosh, maybe you should just be playing with that. The shape on those balls were absolutely amazing. Thank you. How does it feel? It feels like I'm able to put all the things that are in my brain into practice because I'm not going like this. Yeah. Because I think about everything you tell me. I know everything I'm supposed to do, but putting that into my body is tough for me. So when you say take these two fingers off, I can actually think, drop the paddle, show this part, and then follow through. And how big of a ball did you hit? I don't know. Not, not only with power, but shape. The ball was coming <laughs> over. It was diving in with tons of topspin. You were hitting such a big ball, but you weren't even doing any work. Yeah. What were you doing? You were gripping the paddle with two fingers and one. Yeah. Every single ball that you hit just dropped right in. It was perfect. Yeah. And the reason why is because you were letting the paddle go. Okay. And you and I, we've been working on, on this forever. Like five years. Yeah. And you still can't hit that type of ball in a normal match all the time consistently because what will happen? Nerves will happen. Uh, My aggression. Aggression will happen coming from a lacrosse and a basketball background. So you have to do these drills over and over and over again and this is why we're here for you. So the second drill that you can do, if you don't like that, if it feels weird, okay, what you're going to do is Michelle's going to squeeze her dominant wrist with her non-dominant hand. So all the squeezing is going to be going on here. That's going to force her to grip the paddle Am I still three loose. fingers? Full fingers on the paddle. Here we are, let's go. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna swing, swing. And again, it, we're not worried about the result. We're just worried about holding the paddle loose. Now, once again, as I say in all my videos, different tips work for different people. So maybe for user one, two, three, they'll like the fingers and the thumb. Maybe I for- like the fingers and the thumb. Yeah, definitely not this for Michelle. Weird. She's not going to like the grip with the wrist. I personally like the grip with the wrist more than the fingers and the thumb. Now we went over drills for looseness. Now we have to talk about rotation. So again, and legs and legs. Okay. I want you to think with rotation. The first thing that you have to do is you need to make sure that your body is turned sideways prior to the ball. That's the first thing. Okay. This is how you hit twice as big of a ball without doing half the amount of work. You need to make sure that you are turned. Notice when I'm turned, my hips are facing to the side. My paddle is back. Now, when I finish though, watch what I wanna do. I wanna finish with my hips facing forward. So I want you to pretend that there is a laser shining out the front of your hips. When you turn, your laser is pointing to the side. When you finish, your laser is pointing forward. So what we're gonna do right now with Michelle, and the first thing we went over was what? Looseness, to hit twice as big as ball. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna stay loose, we're gonna utilize that, but now we're going to do hips, okay? So the first thing that I want Michelle to do is what? Turn with her body facing to the side. She's holding the paddle loose. Look at her hips, right? Hips don't lie. Her hips, her lasers shining over here. Now do your swing. Boom. And now your hips are facing forward. I want you to think all about your hips. Can I say something? Of course. Something I noticed in my own game recently, not coming from tennis, is my back foot. When I'm turning, I need to be pivoting and pushing off of that to get that power because that's what I'm missing because I'm worried about everything up here. This is just coming like this. Yeah. Not good. You're just so great at these YouTube videos, reading my mind like like two steps ahead, like what I want well, to eventually tell the me. followers, but like you have to tell them now before they do the hips. Well, and here's the thing, I if you get, think about just the, the pivot, the if, you, if you just do turn sideways, we're gonna hold the paddle loose. Now, once you're done, what are you going to do? Finish with your hips forward. Now, all that Michelle is thinking about is her hips. She better not the steps or the pivots or whatever. We're giving tips and tricks to hit twice as big of a ball without doing half the amount of work. So these are all tips. We're, we're not doing putting it all together. So we are doing half the amount of work. So we're going to turn our body and we're, here we are. Now we're going to finish for it. Good. Now we're going to turn our body again. Hips are sideways and all you're thinking about is finishing forward. So by rotating your body and thinking about your hips rotating, it's going to help you hit twice as big as a ball without trying. Now what we're going to do is now, once we get our hips down, another thing that you can think for your hips is that you are coiling and uncoiling with your turn. I want you to think that you are a sponge, okay? When Michelle turns, all of her tension is going to go into the side of her body. And now when she finishes, she's going to finish for it. You are coiling and uncoiling. You are turning and unturning. A great drill to do is if you have a medicine ball or you could do with a paddle, 
what you're going to do is you're going to hold the paddle like this and you're going to turn and then you're going to finish forward. You could do this with a medicine ball or a paddle here and then here. You want your whole body to rotate through your shot. There we are. One more. By doing this, that's going to teach you how to rotate properly. So that's another great drill to hit twice as big of a ball without doing half the amount of work. Very unnatural to me to do this. Yeah, because you don't normally do it while you play pickleball. I'm ready to learn, babe. Okay, for five years. So for five years. Now what we're going to do, after we do that, we worked on our rota rotation, we worked on our looseness. Now we're going to go over one more tip for you to hit twice as big of a forehand shot. And that is fully following through. If you want to hit twice as big of a ball, you need to fully follow through every single time. If you hold the paddle loose, if you rotate through your hips, like we just said, mm -hmm. and if you follow through and accelerate and let the paddle go, you're going to be perfect, okay? So what I mean by that is this where is where many players go wrong. They turn, they go to hit, and they stop. I need to turn, here we are, I'm loose, my hips are facing the side, and now when I finish, I'm going to fully follow through. By going from here to compare to here, this is going to be night and day. This is going to be hitting your normal shot if you stop over here after contact. This is going to be increasing your shot two times without doing half the amount of work. Because if you think about it, with doing half the amount of work, you take your paddle from a 50% range to a 100% full stroke range. So you're getting double the amount of stroke with less the amount of work. Yes, and that's the goal. You guys are already doing the shot. Everyone who has trouble with hitting a big ball or mm -hmm. feels like they work really hard, we're all working the same amount, except in a, in a different perspective, the people that do it right, they let their work fully go. And they have to trust and understand that thinking in your brain, if you go like this, you're giving up. You're giving up everything that you could be getting by stopping halfway through. Yeah. You think pointing your paddle here and just getting the ball in is really what you want, but in the big picture, you have to think long term and you have to go with your elbow. Let your elbow point where you want the ball to go. Yes, and Michelle said elbow and that's a great thing. If you have trouble struggling with your follow throw, what you need to do is you need to think about two different cues. Number one, once you're done, you can point your elbow towards your target. Number two, once you're done, you could put your butt, point your butt cap towards your target. By pointing your elbow or your butt cap, that's going to ensure that you do a full follow throw. So essentially what we're doing and how we're getting you to hit twice as big as a ball without doing half mile of work on the forehand drive side is what? We are rotating. We are turning our body. We're holding the paddle loose. Or first we're holding the paddle loose, then we're letting our body rotate, and then we are fully following through. Mm -hmm. You need to do these drills. You need to keep on doing this over and over again in a practice setting, and what it's going to do, unless you're Michelle, is it's going to win over your muscle memory, and you're eventually going to do it all the time because you're going to realize, hey, guess what? I can hit twice as big of a ball without doing half the amount of work, with without even trying. With doing half the amount of work, not without doing, with. I want you to think. With doing half the amount of I work. I want you to think too. It's like um, <laughs> lifting, right? Like I'm a pickleball player. I'm not a like power lifter, but You're you could not? be. You could be super. I mean, I, I have been getting kind of strong, but you could be super good at lifting, right? But if you don't lift the proper way and you don't have the proper form, you're going to hurt yourself or you're not going to be lifting. You're not just going to get the results you want. It's by utilizing the proper components and the proper movements to have a good shot. So now what we're going to do, we are going to do the backhand drive. So make sure you stay tuned and we're going to get your backhand drive twice as good without doing half the amount of work. With Let's doing go. half the amount of work. Why can't you say that right? We are going to be going over the backhand and we're going to teach you again to hit twice as big with doing half the amount of work. Without, without, with, I don't even know. We're going with. to teach you how to hit twice as big of a ball, okay? Easy, okay? So when we do the backhand, it's kind of the same exact thing. You want to hold your paddle loose. You want to make sure that your body is rotating and you want to make sure that you follow through. Now, it's a little bit different on your backhand side because it is on your non-dominant side. And if you're a two-hander, it's more restricted, even if it's a one-hander, because typically players are way more flexible, way more fluid on their dominant half of their body rather than their non-dominant half of the body. Mm -hmm. So what do we think when we hit a two-handed backhand? What hand does all of the work? Your 
Well, my left hand. Because you are a... I'm right-handed. Yeah. The top hand does the talking. The bottom hand does the walking. So when Michelle goes and turns for her backhand, here we are, let me say it. She's going to turn for her backhand. Her body's going to be sideways. She's going to take her paddle back, Go swings. Ahead. Her top hand is going to do all of the work. So throughout her whole shot, again, that top hand's going to do all of the work the first time. Now, what we're going to do is her body's going to be sideways again, her hips are going to be sideways, and now when she swings again, her body's going to be going forward. Again, one more time, here we are. Good, and here's the big thing with you, and this is why you can't hit a good backhand personally, is that you're thinking all about your grip, and what's happening with you is, and this is gonna be so good, I'm excited for you to do this for everyone, is you go with your hands first, and then your rotation. You need to rotate and then do your hands. It almost looks like if you rewind, and we'll watch this together, you're going here and then here. You're going hands and then body. You need to rotate first and then go kind of with like when I'm your body. The bag and metabolic. Yes. I go hands. And this is and why I'm you, to go. And this is why you can't have a hand. good backhand drive. And watch you'll keep me. on looking at your grip and you'll keep on talking about your grip, but the real thing is is your rotation. So, so focus on your rotation. Me, coach. So again, what's going to happen though is you're going to yeah, good. But here's the thing. We're rotating. This is just going around. So let your body rotate. Now go. Scale 110, how tight are you holding the paddle? A zero. Being tightest? Being the loosest. Okay, you're holding the paddle super tight. Go. Did you see that ball? <laughs> now, okay, people are going to comment, oh, that was a drop feed. But the reason why is because you let your body rotate and then you let your paddle go. So what you can do is regardless of your grip, you could have your grip here, 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 or wherever you want it. You could have pointing to the sky. If you can rotate your body first and then your hands, you're going to be good. So you should watch this video as well. <laughs> now, after we're turning sideways, after we are rotating, after we're holding our paddle loose, now we are going to fully follow throw. So why don't you tell everyone how we teach players to follow throw? Elbows up. Yes, yeah, so elbows are up. But still, when you did that, you went here and then the, your your body first, and then go, swing. Good, now go, boom, elbows are up. So you want both your elbows pointing towards wherever you want to go. This is going to give you twice of, as big of a ball. So again, Michelle's going to what? <gasps> Grip the paddle super loose. She is going to rotate first here, elbows up ball goes you could keep your eye on the ball as well that would help if we had a frontward more. camera on that one you're you're here and you're going you need to make sure that you watch okay. the ball so here we are go ahead, turn sideways here we are wait go and look at that if we were back further in the court that would have been perfect so that's what you can do for your backhand same exact thing for your one-handed backhand as well except you're going to turn and then when you finish you're going to rotate you're going to hold the paddle loose and then when you finish you are going to finish up i like to say the left side of the letter v now let's go over how to hit two times as an effective drop are you ready mm -hmm. let's go so the first thing that we can do for the drop when we hit is we need to make sure that we hold the paddle loose again it goes back to the same exact thing if you hold this paddle tight when you hit the drop and because you just want to get the ball in, what's going to happen? It's going to go too high. You're not going to be able to hit a good drop. You need to think for a drop that your paddle is absorbing the ball. And what I mean by that is if I hold my paddle super tight, the ball is going to bounce off, right? Pop off. If I hold my paddle super loose when the ball comes, I'm going to absorb it. So if you want to double your drop, if you want to make it twice as much effective, all you're gonna do is hold the paddle loose. So on a scale one to 10, you're going to hold the paddle super loose for a drop. So again, I'm gonna hold the paddle super loose and I'm just going to let it go. Maybe I need a little bit more forward. There we are. So you need to hold the paddle super loose. The next thing that you need to do, just like we talked about, we're not really rotating with our drop, our normal drop for beginner intermediate club level players, but you are extending, you are following through. Mm -hmm. A lot of players that can't hit a big ball, they can't hit a good drop, an effective drop, because what? They stop. They stop their paddle. They stop their paddle. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you fully extend throughout your shot. You want to hit through your drop. You don't want to just stop at contact. So the exact same principles apply for the drop. You hit through your drop 
and you hold the paddle loose. And you will hit, again, two times as big of a ball with doing half the amount of work. Because players, they try to hit the ball in, the drop, and super tight. Any questions, comments, or concerns about that? I do have one comment about okay. the drop. Um, you want to be sure that your feet are still while you are hitting the drop. Because if you're running through it, it's going to take away everything else you're doing. Right? Yes. So, here we are. We are going to do a couple drops. And all we're going to do is just hold the paddle, again, super loose and extend. Good. And she is turning a little bit, but you don't want to think about necessarily rotating your body. You just want your paddle down, loose, and forward, sorry. And the follow through for a drop is different than a drive. I want you to think about the follow through as a drop, and that's a great point, Michelle. The drop you're finishing up, the drive you're finishing forward. So you want to really make sure you're finishing up every single time. Now we're going to teach you how to do two times as big of a serve with doing half the amount of Can work. I say one thing about the follow through with the drop and yeah. the drive? So the full 100% point A to point B for the drive was here all the way through 100% the follow through is your elbows. The 100% follow through for a drop is still here, but your follow through does finish here for a drop. So that's really different. Yeah. Right? Is that true? Yeah, it's true. I like to finish more, more here, but you're holding it this way, but it depends what type of spin that you want to hit. Right, it depends on the spin. And like, you, you can, depending on how fast the ball's coming and what type of player you're playing against, you can follow through. And sometimes on my drops, I do come over here for my drop shot, but with a drive, it's always elbows pointing to where you want it to go. Yeah. So they look a little bit different, but you want to make sure you're completing the full stroke because if you, if you stop halfway with a drop, and you think like this is going to get you a drop, it's <laughs> not going to work because you're just kind of like tapping it in. And again, you're not trusting the full point A to point B stroke for a drive and a drop. And this is kind of like a mind switch. It's like a turning point in your pickleball journey that you have to realize, wow, I can let my paddle go if I put it in the right place and it'll be much better. And then you get more confidence and then you can Even hit the bigger. drop on the first try instead of having to work three times for three different drops because your first two are way too high because you were too tight and too stressed and not trusting yourself. And that's why we started this video with like you can hit two times as big of a ball with doing half the amount of work. I'm yes. getting nervous while I'm saying this now. You said it right. Like, yeah, I know. I got it now. Yeah. How, uh, 30 minutes into the video. However, though, we, we, we start off saying players, they try to go big. And what happens is they end up injuring themselves. They end up losing confidence. It's like a self-destruct snowball effect. You try to go big, you don't do it the right way, you try to drive, you try to drop, then you try to get the ball in, so then you then lay you off anymore, down. then you mental down, and then you blink, and then the game's 11-0, 11-0. So that's why like, we spend a lot of time on the drives and the drops right now, yeah. but all these things are so essential for you to hit a bigger ball. And it's really easy for you to say and teach because you have all the knowledge and you're a great player, but not everyone is as good as you are. And for me, I like to share my information because literally I still do it. I, I lose my confidence because I'm not trusting myself enough. And the more you practice, and the more you play, and the more you think about doing the right thing, you, you don't even have to think at times because you're trusting yourself because you know point A to point B yeah. and you're doing it the right way. And you're like, oh my gosh, how are all these things just coming together now for me? And I can beat five oh four five players. Yeah. And speaking about point A to point B. Show me that point A to point B again, exactly like you just did. For what? Uh, just whatever you did. This? Good, point A to point B. So we're gonna be speaking about point A to point B with the serve, and that's another thing to get into. Yeah. I feel like with the serve, a lot of players do the same exact thing that they're doing with their drops. They end up stopping their shot. You need to fully follow through for the serve every single time. And if you see anyone that has a really big powerful serve every single one of them ends with a follow through like this every, every single one single of them time. no one stops here if you're getting if if you have trouble returning a serve it i can guarantee you it doesn't end here and the same mechanics are going to apply on the serve as they did for the forehand and the backhand as well as the drop except again the drop you don't want to necessarily think about rotating so number one you need to hold the paddle loose on the serve we get a lot of people at universal rackets when um 
I used to lead all the clinics and they would go, oh, I want to hit a bigger serve. Oh, I came here to hit a bigger serve. Can you teach me a big, bigger serve? I went to all these people, couldn't get a bigger serve. And I'd go, yeah, sure, sounds good. I'm just saying, just for a side note, not everyone might know what big means in a serve. Big serve means power, depth. Yeah. Power and depth, okay? Not super hard, but before. big means deep and tons of power. So they'd go, oh, wow, I I've, have trouble with my serve. Okay, I got it. Sounds good. They're like, really? You got it? Like, you sound really comfortable. I'm like, yeah, I got it. They come out. I'm with them. I say, okay, everyone hold the paddle way looser. And they're like, okay. And then I'm like, actually think that you're holding the paddle super loosely. And then we do this demonstration. Stick the paddle straight out. Now, if I came up to you and I, okay, good, she was listening, okay? Because finally, after like five years, she's listening about holding the paddle loose. But a lot of players, what will happen when they stick the paddle out, you know what to do. I won't get the paddle out of their hand because they're gripping it super tight. If you're gripping the paddle super tight, it's not going to be right. Mm -hmm. So we teach them literally hold the paddle super loose, go out and serve, not care about serving. Like I used to instruct people and go, hey, go out and serve. Just don't care and just, just let it go, whatever. And they're like, wow, oh my gosh, I got all this power. I got all this spin. And this was kind of like when you hit your drives at the beginning of this video with those two fingers and a thumb. Mm -hmm. That ball looked absolutely beautiful on the other side. I'd call it the pickle yogi because like I name it after you because you're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. However, the reason why is because you're just letting it go. So the first thing, if you want to hit twice as big of a serve with doing half the mountains work is you need to make sure that you hold the paddle loose. It's much easier said than done. You need to make a mental effort to do that. Now, the second thing is what? What did we go over every single time except for the drop? What's the second component? Follow through. <laughs> That's the third. Rotation. Rotation. Good. There we are. We're close, guys. But here we are. We're sideways again. And when we serve, you really want to rotate your body. Do you want to talk a little bit about rotating your body during the serve, Michelle? Yeah. So the number one thing that I think of when I'm rotating my body from what you've taught me is to make sure that I'm pivoting this back foot. Yeah and I'm rotating my hips to the court and where I want the ball to go. Yeah, and we were taking, we're taking this fitness class now, uh, Metabolic, it's the most amazing workout, shout out Metabolic Jupiter. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the workout, they have this bag that you have to hit. Now, I've never came from a boxing background. You did that? Uh, you've never came from a boxing background. So like, they teach you how to throw the punches and they're mm -hmm. like, you don't wanna just use your upper arm, you wanna rotate your and body load, and load yeah and load so like weight. your whole punch is coming from your actual hips. hips and rotations and like utilizing or doing that and then putting it into my serve makes such a big difference for myself personally because i really am teaching myself how to load it's the number one way to get power and then your paddle just follows kind of like with my backhand drive yeah and when you're throwing rotate these first. like hooks and crosses if you don't rotate you're gonna like hurt your arm and your wrist it just feels off when you're not doing it right yeah it does like it feels unnatural and forced yeah so the same exact thing with your serve i want you to rotate as much as possible now you brought up an amazing thing and we can finally talk about it yes. for the serve is what pivoting your back foot so by pivoting your back foot, AKA they like to call it squashing the bug, but I don't use that because I think it's gross. However though, all you're gonna do is once you're done, you're going to pivot your back foot. So once you're done serving again, you're gonna pivot your back foot. By pivoting your back foot, looks what it's doing with your hips. Your hips are shaking and rotating. She's like, Tyler, don't you better it. not be dancing all the time don't and everything because I love doing that, I won't. But here we are, let's go. So your hips are gonna be sideways, then you're gonna rotate again and you're going to finish forward, okay? So rotate with the hips. Let's see one with Michelle. Michelle's gonna be sideways, here we are. Sideways? Yep, close stance, rotate forward, good. Now you could hold the paddle loose. That might it's help. Time. It's been a long time since she has done a close stance serve. Whoa, look how deep that is, amazing. I just felt so much faster and acceleration. And how much work did you feel like you Half the amount. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Can you believe that? It's working. Okay. Now, next thing again is you have to fully follow through. If you put steps one and step two together, you put that cake together and you don't throw it in the oven, it's not going to be a beautiful cake. If you hold the looseness and. Just think about last time you baked a cake. <laughs> yeah, I can't bake a cake. You can... However, I can teach pickleball. Yeah. Think. I think so. We'll see. Let us, let us know if this helps you. However, though, Again, if you can rotate, if you can hold the paddle loose and you don't file through, it's not gonna be good. So you need to make sure you're sideways. 
you rotate, and then you fully, again, follow through all the time. And how do we do that? We can either do the butt cap or the shoulder. Do we have any other further things to add with our serve? Yes, if you're looking for more power and you can't find it, think about too, like your body. Are you going up with your serve? Are you going even falling back after your serve? You wanna be in forward through the court, moving your body weight from this foot, rotate it forward into the court and all of your body weight will be going behind your serve and that will give you the most amount of power. Yes, 100%, I love it, momentum. Mm -hmm. Momentum and rotation equals power. Yes. And I feel like we didn't really touch that upon momentum that much. And your legs. It's and your so legs. important. Yeah. But if you can get your body and your momentum going into the shot, mm -hmm. that's going to be good. I love how this video is evolving. At first we were like, let's do the legs. And At first you're like, get out of my video. And then we're going to put all these things together. <laughs> oh, did you need me? Not really. No. Um, okay. Comment below if you like me in the videos <laughs> with Tyler. I can't wait to see the responses. Yeah. I bring the happiness, the, the light air. Yeah, I'm just ready to just spit out all these tips. Yeah, but I mean, I can give some good insight as, you know, not a perfect pickleball player, still learning yeah. things. Me too, me too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now we did that, we did that. Now we are going to go to a kitchen. But before we go to a kitchen, we got to think about one huge thing that's going to take everyone's game to the next level. And what's that? We didn't even mention it. Breathing. Mm. Breathing. You guys got to breathe when you play pickleball. You guys need to inhale on the take back and you need to exhale forward. Every single shot, your ground stroke, your drive, your drop, your return, your serve, mm -hmm. you need to breathe while you hit. That's why a lot of players grunt in pickleball because they grunt because mm -hmm. that's a form of breathing. Now, we're not telling you to grunt and if you do grunt, don't say that you got it from the Universal Rackets YouTube channel. However, though, if you can grunt or inhale and exhale while you hit, that's gonna make a big shot. So, the pickle yogi, could you please guide us with your breathing? Because I'm so, Excited to have you in this video for these purposes. Here we are, let's go. Breathing in yoga is super different than breathing in all this. Cause in yoga, you're just moving while you yeah. do it. This is like, thank you, all these hundred things and breathing. Here we are. So you're gonna inhale on the take back. One more. Wow, look. Why can't you bring these to our actual mixed doubles games? Well, I don't know. Maybe I gotta could. practice on it more. Wanna drill? <laughs> Perfect, all right. So now what we're gonna do, we are going to go up to the kitchen and we're going to teach you how to hit twice as big of a dink and a volley with doing half the amount of work. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. So now we're going to teach you how to do the dink. Now the dink, it's the same exact thing. You, a lot of players, they feel like the dinking, they have to work so hard, they have to make it so intense. For me, coming personally from a tennis background, it was a huge hump to get over that dinks are cool, they're controlled, they're consistent, they're efficient. It's kind of like you're trying, but like you're not actually trying. You're actually trying not to, you're actually trying to keep dinking, I think, when you're in a dinking battle. You're trying to not do something dumb and give up. Yeah. In my brain. Yeah. Like you get to your third dink sometimes and then everyone just like breaks down and just hits it hard. Yeah. Either in the net or it could go always one more body dink. bag. But like, I feel like that's the biggest thing for dinking is like hit that net, hit one extra dink than you think you need. Yeah. Unless it's an obvious take it out of the air. Like when I used to play, if you look at old videos of me, I'm like, yeah, like it looks like it's so embarrassing <laughs> when you should be like this. Yeah. Very different, night and day. You would think that the first one would be way better, especially coming from a tennis background. But it wasn't. You wanna know why it's not? Because you don't have time. Yeah. Because you're so close together. That's true. And especially, ooh, that's a great point, Michelle. Oh. And then also as well, like the volley's too, even less time. Okay, so Michelle's gonna go over there. And again, the first thing that you're gonna do for your dink is if you hold this paddle tight, where's the ball gonna go? It's gonna go up every single time. But by holding the paddle loose, it's going to allow you to absorb the ball and really just get that ball over the net. So number one is what? Hold that paddle super loose every single time. Now the second thing is by limiting your paddle movement. I think if you wanna double the amount of your dink, your effectiveness, limiting the paddle movement is huge. There's this uh, video, I think it was from Jilly B actually, that she's Love like, her. you go here and then here, here and then here, That's it. rather than here or even here, like, okay, when I first started out playing pickleball, I was literally, right, I was here, I was 
big backswing, right? Like tennis, big loops. And then, okay, I was limiting it a little bit, so I was maybe like a little bit here. Not as big back swings, but still big swings, right? But think, if I take a big swing and Michelle speeds the ball up, I'm not going to have time to get back. Mm -hmm. So literally, you want to just push it. That's the great word, push it. You want to push the ball forward. Notice, here, look how little in front and forward. So you want to double your dinks and literally not do, actually not do the work. All you're going to do is just limit the paddle movement at all times. It's more of a mental thing. You never want to let the paddle get out of your vision while you're at the kitchen. So you want to always see the paddle. If the paddle goes here, you're wrong. If your paddle goes here and you can't see it, that's wrong. Because if I'm here, Tyler's hitting the ball right here and I'm, there's no way I'm going to protect myself. Yeah. And the, the game's just getting faster. So you always want to keep your paddle in your vision at the kitchen. Yes. When you're back in transition and when you're serving, you have plenty of time to go like this and come back. But up here, in your vision, never behind you. There's yeah. no reason for it. And in it. front. So again, just to review, keeping paddle in front, vision, like you said, that's an amazing Vision at point. the kitchen. Vision at the kitchen. I like that. We got to do a video on that fully. Mm -hmm. Next thing is what? Holding paddle loose, just pushing it, not a big swing. And the last thing that I'd like to say is legs, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of players, not even you, using your legs, but by dropping your center of gravity. A lot of players, they stand up and they bend at their waist and it forces them to go up. The lower you can get, the more forward you can go. So I want you to start utilizing your legs, okay? You're not utilizing your legs to get power, but you're utilizing your legs to keep yourself down at all times and limit the paddle movement. So really get into your legs while you're hitting. Any comments on the legs? Yeah, just like he said, use them and don't just squat down and back. You wanna squat and hinge forward. Forward, yeah, hinge forward, that's the key because then you can lean over and take volleys in and that's there. That's where a lot of back pain can come from too if you're doing it wrong. Yeah, it's gonna help you block the balls back and I mean, even it feels much better. Easier said than done, I guess, while we're it playing is. pickleball. So hold a paddle loose, keep the paddle out in front and I think the, the last step for the volleys would be what? What do you think? All you. I don't know what you're gonna say. I don't know either, what do you think? Oh, so you said paddle loose out in front. Yeah. No follow through. Don't yeah. bring it back. Don't bring it anywhere. Yeah. Or that's the same thing as out in front. So limit your swing. Legs. Be in your legs. And legs, yes. Because if you're up here trying to volley, no good. You want to be here and in it. Yeah. Because if you're up here. And when you're, you're up here, lose. you're going to take the ball early, uh, later. Yeah. Rather than if you're down and you're going in, you're going to take the and ball And look earlier. how much further you can reach. When you're squatting and hinging like this, like this type of shape, my paddle it goes pretty, like you can reach my paddle with your hand. And hands. think about the earlier she can make contact with the ball, the higher up she can make it, rather than the closer that she gets to the ball, the less aggressive she can be because she won't be jammed and the lower the ball is going to be. And when you're in athletic stance, you can move faster to where you need to be. So if you want to slide and take a forehand and you're in athletic stance, you can do that. If I'm up here, this is not going to have enough time. So be proactive, not reactive to the volleys. Yeah. So we're just going to go through every single shot real quick. We're going to hit with each other and we're just going to review it, okay? So we're going to start with the volleys. We're going to be volleying back and forth in the air. And here we are. Let's go. So we're going to go, what? Paddle out in front at all times, limiting my swing and getting into my legs at all times. Here we are. Paddle out in front. I want to take it back. I'm, I'm even taking it back right now. I'm not Oops. thinking of it. Here we are. One more. I want to take it back. <laughs> okay. But number one is try to be loose in general with the volleys. And remember what Sherry said about Tyson McGuffin? He said when he hits his volleys, he lit, what does he do? What did Keeps he Keeps it out in front. He's always out here. He never brings it in here. He hits the volley and then he's here. And that's something that I want to do. I want to do it too. To my Can game. I just so, be Tyson McGuffin? Here we are. <laughs> so what we're going to do is just hold the paddle loose. And then the second thing is by just keeping the paddle out in front. You want to hit better volleys and we're doing volleys not yep good just keep the paddle out in front at all times okay every single time my paddle stays out in front so number one again I'm loose and number two I'm just keeping my paddle out in front out 
out in front all times. That's going to help you a ton. It's going to help you block the balls back, and I mean, even it feels much better. Easier said than done, I guess, while we're it playing is. pickleball. So hold a paddle loose, keep the paddle out in front, and I think the, the last step for the volleys would be what? What do you think? All you. I don't know what you're going to say. I don't know either. What do you think? Oh, so you said paddle loose out in front. Yeah. No follow through. Don't yeah. bring it back. Don't bring it anywhere. Yeah. Or that's the same thing as out in front. So limit your swing. Legs. Be in your legs. And legs, yes. Because if you're up here trying to volley, no good. You want to be here and in it. Yeah. Because if you're up here. And when you're, you're up here, lose. you're going to take the ball early, uh, later. Yeah. Rather than if you're down and you're going in, you're going to take the and ball And look earlier. how much further you can reach. When you're squatting and hinging like this, like this type of shape, my paddle goes pretty, like you can reach my paddle with your and hand. And think about the earlier she can make contact with the ball, the higher up she can make it. Rather than the closer that she gets to the ball, the less aggressive she can be because she won't be jammed and the lower the ball is going to be. And when you're in athletic stance, you can move faster to where you need to be. So if you want to slide and take a forehand and you're in athletic stance, you can do that. If I'm up here, this is not going to have enough time. So be proactive, not reactive to the volleys. Yeah. So we're just going to go through every single shot real quick. We're going to hit with each other and we're just going to review it, okay? So we're going to start with the volleys. We're going to be volleying back and forth in the air. And here we are, let's go. So we're going to go, what? Paddle out in front at all times, limiting my swing and getting into my legs at all times. Here we are. Paddle out in front. I want to take it back. I'm, I'm even taking it back right now. I'm not Oops. thinking of it. Here we are, one more. I want to take it back. <laughs> okay, now, Dink, so what are we doing? Loose, getting into our legs again and limiting our paddle movement. We're pushing the ball. We're not doing a big swing and we're not moving each other around too much paddles that in I go into the slinger. Here we are. Forward. Paddles in the vision, like Michelle said. There we are. Less is more with Dinks. Here we are. Good. Speed up. Play it out. Ah! Come on. You got it. Come on. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. One more. Ah! Okay. Good job. <laughs> All right, and now we're going to do our drops, okay? Drops and drives. So, with our drops and drives, what are we doing? We are following through. We're holding the paddle head. loose, and we're rotating our body. Um, I want you to talk about the legs here. Yeah, for... so you really want to get into your legs. All of your power comes from legs and rotation. So, I want you to think for your ground strokes that you are loading on your back leg, and then you're exploding forward. Sometimes when I see leg. you hitting a, like a drive, your knee, your back, like as you're pivoting, your back knee gets really low, almost like you're lunging. Yeah, like anchoring the back knee. Yeah, so by getting your back knee down, that's going to help you hit up on the ball and get below the ball. So again, I'm getting into my legs. I'm loading and then I'm exploding and rotating forward. It helps so much when you think about these tips. Loading, exploding, forward. Now, the next thing that you can do as well is get your momentum into your shots as well. So watch, I'm not going to wait for the ball. I'm going to move up and rotate. I'm going to move up and rotate. I'm going to move up and rotate every single time. Same thing for the backhand. Here we are. So I'm going to load, move up, fully follow through, rotating with my hips, right? The more I rotate with my hips, the more I'm going to be much better when I hit. Now, when you rotate with your hips, for me, where I go wrong personally is that I tighten up my swing while I rotate my hips. If I really want to hit a good ball, can I get one more backhand? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be loose and rotate. Because here's the thing. All this stuff is doing the work now. You don't have to compensate with your paddle tightness. Yeah. For me and for you and for everyone. Once you learn these proper mechanics, before not utilizing the mechanics, you would have to compromise with holding the paddle tight. Now you're hitting twice as big of a ball with doing half the amount of work. You don't have to think about that anymore. It's almost like your paddle and your strokes all just come as the icing on the cake. Yes. All the work is done in your feet, in your legs, in your hips, and then this just follows. Yeah, it has nothing to do with your swing necessarily, as long as you have the proper mechanics. Now we're going to do the drops, okay? So again, the drops, I'm limiting my paddle move, or I'm following through, holding the paddle loose, and what did we say? I think getting the ball out in front. 
I'm not sure. Pulling the paddle loose, and then you're, you're following through where you want the ball to oh, go. Okay, here we are. So again, loose and finishing up, because for the drop, I am lifting the ball up in there. I am lifting it every single time, lifting it up. Okay, I was a little bit too high, it's okay. If it ever goes too high, you either need to follow through more or hold the paddle looser. Okay, so I need to hold the paddle loose, up. There we are. Five more. Four more. Three more. Two more. One more. Ooh, deep backhand. One more. Come on, give me a good backhand again. There we are. I haven't hit the one hand backhand in forever. Oh, there we are. Even better. All right, let's do our two. I've been doing the two hand. I feel like I've been doing the two hand more just because I've been watching pickleball. Still not that good at it though. But trying to use the same tips again. Loose and finish with the paddle up. Loose, finish with the paddle up every Sorry. single time. So, if you guys can do all these things, you're going to be able to hit big balls. The number one thing I want you guys to think about this video is if you want to get to the next level, it's not by how hard you swing. Oh. It's not by this exact swing. It's not by your grip for your backhand that you keep on thinking about. It's not by me thinking I can blast every ball. Right. It's, it's by not by playing tennis. <laughs> yeah. It's by doing the right things at the right time. Less is more. Utilize these mechanics in your shots, and you're going to hit two times as big of a ball. You're going to get to be a much better player. With doing half, half the amount of work. work. Yep. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it was good. Long video, but... We went over every single thing. Everyone needed to hear this. If you want to take your game to the I next level. I need to hear this every day. Can I like get an affirmation you, of this yeah. video every day? Guys, if brain. you guys want a new thing that we're going to be doing, it's like a, a movement. What you can do is you can turn this on while you sleep and just listen to it while you're sleeping. Okay. Your subconscious. You're going to be hearing me in your subconscious mind. You're going to have Michelle in your subconscious mind. It's going to eventually make you like Ben Johns or Tyson McGuffin. It's a brand new program that we're rolling out. If you want to check any other programs, click the link in the description. Fill out the Google form. We'll come to you. Put on some amazing pickleball clinics. If you guys Make want sure. this paddle. Oh, we're doing a paddle giveaway as well. We are giving away an amazing Selkirk Invicta Vanguard Control Pickleball Paddle. Make sure to click the link in the description to enter the giveaway. We're giving away one to an amazing lucky winner. Subscribe, share with your friends, do all these things, watch it over again, keep on doing these things, drill, try again, keep drilling, get that muscle memory, play with your pickleball partner or your love partner with your pickleball partner. Have going, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time on partner. court. Uh, I meant like wife, but I don't know. All right, let's go. And rotate. I'm going to move up and rotate. I'm going to move up and rotate every single time. Same thing for the backhand. Here we are. So I'm going to load, move up, fully follow through, rotating with my hips, right? The more I rotate with my hips, the more I'm going to be much better when I hit. Now, when you rotate with your hips for me, where I go wrong personally is that I tighten up my swing while I rotate my hips. If I really want to hit a good ball, can I get one more backhand? Mm -hmm. I'm going to be loose and rotate. Because here's the thing. All this stuff is doing the work now. You don't have to compensate with your paddle tightness. Yeah. For me and for you and for everyone. Once you learn these proper mechanics, before not utilizing the mechanics, you would have to compromise with holding the paddle tight. Now you're hitting twice as big of a ball with doing half the amount of work. You don't have to think about that anymore. It's almost like your paddle and your strokes all just come as the icing on the cake. Yes. All the work is done in your feet, in your legs, in your hips, and then this just follows. Yeah, it has nothing to do with your swing necessarily, as long as you have the proper mechanics. Now we're going to do the drops, okay? So again, the drops, I'm limiting my paddle move, or I'm following through, holding the paddle loose, and what did we say? I think getting the ball out in front. I'm not sure. Pulling the paddle loose and then you're, you're following through where you want the ball to oh, go. Okay, here we are. So again, loose and finishing up. Because for the drop, I am lifting the ball up in there. I am lifting it every single time. Lifting it up. Okay, I was a little bit too high. It's okay. And if it ever goes too high, you either need to follow through more or hold the paddle looser. Okay, so I need to hold the paddle loose. Up. There we are. Five more. 
Four more. Three more. Two more. One more. Ooh, deep backhand. One more. Come on, give me a good backhand again. There we are. I haven't hit the one hand backhand in forever. Oh, there we are. Even better. All right, let's do a two. I've been doing the two hand. I feel like I've been doing the two hand more just because I've been watching pickleball. Still not that good at it though. But trying to use the same tips again, loose and finish with the paddle up. Loose, finish with the paddle up every Sorry. single time. So, if you guys can do all these things, you're gonna be able to hit big balls. The number one thing I want you guys to think about this video is if you wanna to get to the next level, it's not by how hard you swing. Oh. It's not by this exact swing. It's not by your grip for your backhand that you keep on thinking about. It's not by me thinking I can blast every ball. Right, it's, it's by not by playing tennis. <laughs> yeah, it's by doing the right things at the right time. Less is more, utilize these mechanics in your shots and you're gonna hit two times as big of a ball. Then you're gonna to get to be a much better player. With doing half, half the amount of work. work. Yep, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I think it was good. Long video, but we went over every single thing. Everyone needed to hear this. If you want to take your game to the I next level. I need to hear this every day. Can I like get an affirmation you, of this yeah. video every day? Guys, if brain? you guys want a new thing that we're going to be doing, it's like a, a movement we can do is you can turn this on while you sleep and just listen to it while you're sleeping, okay? In your subconscious. You're going to be hearing me in your subconscious mind. You're going to have Michelle in your subconscious mind. It's going to eventually make you like Ben Johns or Tyson McGuffin. It's a brand new program that we're rolling out. If you want to check any other programs, click the link in the description, fill out the Google form. We'll come to you. Put on some amazing pickleball clinics. If you guys Make want sure. this paddle. Oh, we're doing paddle giveaway as well. We are giving away an amazing Selkirk Invicta Vanguard Control Pickleball Paddle. Make sure to click the link in the description to enter the giveaway. We're giving away one to an amazing lucky winner. Subscribe, share with your friends, do all these things, watch it over again, keep on doing these things, drill, try again, keep drilling, get that muscle memory, play with your pickleball partner or your love partner with your pickleball partner. Have a good one, happy hitting, and we will see you guys next time partner. on court. Uh, I meant like wife, but I don't know. All right, let's go.